Hello, welcome to the K-Scope podcast 2019 roundup. Billy Reeves here, hope you're well. Uh, Going to hear from some of the artists and uh, some of the highlights of the LPs. Going to start with this from Richard Barbieri, who you'll know as a key member of Japan and Porcupine Tree, with a track from his Variants series, a collection on K-Scope of vinyl releases. This from Variants 5 is New Soul 2018.
Richard Barbieri and eagle-eared listeners will know that that was a variant on a theme that was used for Buying New Soul by Porcupine Tree. Next up, Edwin, the mainstay of psychedelic superstars Osric Tentacles, who released his first ever solo LP via K-Scope early in 2019 and urging for us all to commune with the great outdoors. I've always, I don't know, I've just always had this, I, I, it's really hard to explain. It's like a kind of idea of just standing in nature. And if you'd stand there long enough, you might just become part of it and shimmer into it and all that. And I don't know why I thought of that for this title, really. I think all the tracks on there have a moment where they stop and take a breath and you can just pause and it gets a little bit nature sounds swirling around the room a little bit. And I don't know, maybe, I don't know. Or it could just be a load of absolute nonsense. But I just like the idea of it. It sparks a few ideas off and makes people think. I think it's something we're all going to do one day, isn't it? Really just shimmer off into the nature.
Ed Wynn from Shimmer Into Nature. That's entitled Shim. Next up, Colin Edwin, who you'll know best probably as the bass player of Porcupine Tree. Ramage Head was the album from Orc, his side project supergroup. And I started by asking him, why on earth are they called Orc? I, I was very insistent at the beginning that it should be O-R-K. Mm. Um, but it's we just get lazy and call it orc. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, it's it's, <laughs> it's yeah, it's easier. It's it's not helpful though. It's an ungoogleable name. If you Google orc, you get loads of <laughs> fantasy nonsense, <laughs> which wasn't really. But actually, I will explain for the benefit because I know you're going to ask me the next question. Yeah. Is going to be you know, it's to do with um, in Italian, orc means uh, orca is killer whale. And the two of the guys in the band from Italy mm. had, a, I presume, a drunken conversation <laughs> when they were trying to work out a name for the band. And they came up with something, the title of which was in Italian, which I'm not going to say, was the something to do with killer whales. Um, and they wanted to get this into the name of the band because the idea of a killer whale, it's a beautiful thing, mm. but it's also a very dangerous thing. Yeah. So if you're a seal. Uh, yeah, and I said, well, we can't call ourselves Orca, you know, we're not making nature documentary music, you know, that just sounds ridiculous. So uh, they eventually they wore me down that it should be ORK as an acronym, and I just thought, well, why not, you know? Yeah, that's, that's exactly <laughs> by that point.
Black Blooms from Ramage Head. Uh, the next uh, K-Scope podcast was the mighty Paul Draper from Manson, one of the greatest bands of the 90s. K-Scope re-releasing all of Manson's music from their enormous EMI archive. Six was the latest in this series, so I asked Paul Draper about the madness of EMI's budget back in the 90s. So we arrived there and we were right, we're going to start our album today. Uh, I think Spike, who was mixing it, came through and he said, um, I've just overrun on mixing the uh, the whole album, Celebrity Skin. It's like, can you just go in Studio One for like a couple of weeks? Yeah, fine, you know, like, you know, 3,000 pounds a day. <laughs> and uh, But, you know, who's going to argue with Courtney Love? You know, I'm not going to start <laughs> stuff and getting her album mixed. So Courtney Love was in one room and we were in the other room. We weren't twiddling our thumbs, but we started experimenting, you know, with mm. obviously one of the most famous recording rooms in the world with Jimi Hendrix recorded yeah, all this stuff. Studio One in where? Obviously, uh, Olympic obviously, Studios like in Barnes. Barnes. The Rolling Stones recorded all this stuff. The Beatles recorded the first ever live... Satellite all broadcast, love, all you need is yeah, love yeah, in uh, there. So it's, that's what kicked all the oddness off. You know, we were in London and it was like, whoa, here we go. We would come in one morning and Richard Ashcroft would walk past you from the mm. verse. Like, oh, Richard, you know, and then Jarvis Cocker, a morning lad, you know. And then um, Charlie Watts and the Rolling Stones would make you a cup of tea and then you'd just sit next to Eric Clapton <laughs> eating his beans on toast, you know what I mean? Um, and then one point, one day I came in and... Uh, there was uh, a, a whole room full of glasses with different levels of water in, um, and that's on that's on the outtake CD, isn't it? Yeah, it's around, video it? footage. It's on YouTube. I think it's going to come out on a Manson documentary later on. But the actual take of Dominic Chad doing his piano song with that full orchestra is on there. Right, and it's like you know that thing when you're a kid and you get some water and you wet yeah, your hand, yeah, yeah. you rub it and you go. Yeah. I mean, we we had the world, the world's most renowned water, <laughs> like 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 yeah, literally spider fingers going around fifteen cups. No, it must have been, well, it must have been ten, but maybe, I don't know. I don't know. You know, uh, you maybe he's got tricks where he can like get his you know opposing digits working <laughs> round more than ten bottles of time. But it was a feat to behold. But I just walked in and just walked straight out, and I thought <laughs> I'm not being part of this. <laughs> Fallout from the special edition of Six. Giancarlo Error was next, a little trip 
out to the east to talk to him about Ends, his first solo LP. Really, an undefinable genre. Uh, oh, uh, actually, I was, I was about, I was almost hoping that you were telling me what kind of music it. Oh no! <laughs> well, there's a, I guess there's a certain, there's a certain sort of like romantic era of classical music about it. There's a certain improvisation about it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to call it advanced music. Ooh, I like it. It's advanced. advanced. It's not progressive. It's advanced. Yeah. It's beyond that. Because I like it's using it. a lot of you know modern equipment. It's using old equipment. So yeah, yeah. I mean, it's definitely using what I really liked about it. Yeah, as, as you said, I'm not really huge. I love electronic music, mm. but for I mean, not for most people, but for a lot of people, electronic music is about the beats. Is a, yeah. and while for me, for well, because I'm a musician first of all, really beats never. It, it, I mean, for me, a beat is like an it's like an effect. It's something yeah. that can be there. I love it if it is minimalist and stuff, but it's not really a building block for the music. It's something that is there mm. afterwards, mainly, basically. And rhythm for me is is more done with the piano or with delays, with effects, mm. with something that is more musical or with myself playing in a, in a mm. weird way. I just I, I just wonder sometimes with beats that, that makes it too easy for the listener. Okay, here's the center of it. Yes, you know. Whereas this, by resisting that, you're kind of like, okay, where are, where am I now? It's a bit more spacey. Yeah, yeah but also it forces you. Uh, you know, one thing I immediately noticed when I was just playing the demos, for example, to people, is that although there are no beats or almost no beats, mm. obviously the rhythm is very much in the piano. Yeah, I looks, think yeah, in looks. the moment when you just leave off beats, then mm. obviously other instruments get the focus for, um, for the rhythm. I mean, the, the, I think the brain is like with the voice. If there is a voice, the brain follows the voice. If you just put in a voice, the brain is actually looking for something yeah. to hook on yeah, in terms exactly. of melody.
Giancarlo Era, the frontman of No Sound. That is from his LP Ends, and that's entitled End 4. In the spring, a little trip to the South Bank Centre's cafe, and me old mate, Carvus Tarabi, who's recently joined a Gong. And I asked him how the late, great David Allen got round to asking him to join. And it was on a night where he was just near to me in Cafe Otto doing an improv thing with um, Marshall Allen from the Sun Ra Orchestra, oh, yeah. Dave Allen and Marshall Allen. Mm. So I got there, you know, a bit early, and he was sort of, he was sort of, for the first five or ten minutes, I sort of felt like something was up, because he was kind of, I won't say exactly jittery, but mm. there's something was up, and then he said, oh, you know, hey, Carvers, I've just been thinking, do you want to play guitar in gong? Wow. And, I, and you know, <laughs> I sort of said, well, yeah, I'd love to. You haven't heard me play. And he said, oh, I don't need to hear you play, man. You know, and I'd, I'd never heard Mike Howlett play. I never heard Pierre Merlin play. I just, I just know you're going to be right. You know, I want someone to bring fire. We uh, booked a sort of get together down in a rehearsal place down in um, uh, New Cross. And uh, as I was waiting for him, you know, I. Um, just started coming up with a kind of feeling all gongy came up with a gongy riff David came in and started singing along with it and this riff eventually became uh, When God Shakes Hands with the Devil of I See You and after we'd been sort of jamming this for about half an hour he said hey man that's great you got any more of them I said yeah loads (laughs) 20 years worth yeah wow so all these years that of having these riffs that were too gongy I've now now got somewhere to to put them it's big shoes to fill now though well, well, it is. I mean, that was never, that was that was never the plan, obviously, yeah. or it certainly wasn't the plan for me. I think now uh, it was probably the plan. It was probably David's plan, mm. because he was dropping some very large hints right from the beginning about, wow. well, man, you know, you know, I'm not going to live forever, yeah. sort of thing. Uh, but I didn't realise it was going to happen so quickly. You can't channel David Allen. I can only yeah. be myself, yeah, yeah. and I can't sort of, kind of cop any of his shtick or anything. And it's like Doctor Who. It's still the same story, it's still the same basic narrative, but each doctor brings her own thing to it.
gong, my sawtooth wake from the K-Scope LP, the universe also collapses. Daniel Tompkins, the singer of the mighty Tesseract, released a solo album on K-Scope this year. His podcast, As Things Stand, got the most listens. Well done, Dan, and thank you very much. Dan spoke about turning from frontman Cozy in the group to putting himself forward as solo artiste. I remember when I first toured with Tesseract and I, I was touring with, lot, with, the, with artists that were a lot older than us mm. and just looking around and thinking, what, why are they so miserable? Mm-hmm. You know, we were fresh, we were experiencing new things and it was, super, it was a super exciting time. And I'm just starting to feel a little bit of that. So I'm looking mm. for ways to do new things again first time experiences so going away to America and doing a five day video shoot is something wow. I've never done mm. an amazing experience it, they, it does look fun yeah you know you can really feel that and I really it. had to tap into a different side of me and, mm. it, and it ties into the whole reason why I've done this record is because I'm rediscovering who I am mm. as an artist visually sonically and even as an actor, like I know it sounds crazy, but yeah, I had to I had to really put on the acting hat and try my hardest to kind of convey that, those emotions. You, you do that as a frontman with a rock group. You know, it's yeah, part of the gig, yeah. isn't it? Intoxicated by the silence of your campfire. Understand your resignation and your content. Separated by the silence Your stoic pacifier And is gazing to discover
Daniel Tompkins, and that is entitled Limitless. One of the major releases on the label this year was from the award-winning Russian duo I Am The Morning. We had a special podcast with the venerable editor of Prog magazine, Jerry Ewing, who spoke with great love about the first time he met Mariana. And following that, a little snippet of an interview with Mariana where she explains the Victoriana influence behind her work. She was a friend of Danny from Anathema and he'd invited her along and we got talking at the after show party that Danny was DJing at and he was spinning some classic uh, 70s disco if I remember and about two days later a CD arrived in the office it was very early I'm the morning stuff and I was I was entranced I thought this is this is wonderful it's I, I just loved her voice I loved Gleb's piano playing and I liked the dark elements uh, behind the lyrics and the, the sort of morbidity. I really, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot, um, a lot is made, I think, of, of uh, how sombre some of the subject matter that, that people who get interested in, in progressive music, how it can go. I don't know, I think it's any more sort of sombre or, or weird than lyric choices for heavy metal, I think. But I think perhaps because some of the music is less... Um, in your face, which is certainly the case with quite a lot of I Am The Morning's music. Um, perhaps people expect it to all be airy-fairy, and, and, and it's not, you know. So when I was <laughs> around 11, 10, uh, 11 years old, my parents took me to this like his- history camp where people were, uh, you know, doing this reenactment of different historical events, and one of them, and I was kind of playing in a team of uh, mortuary, people and uh, as a part of what they did they reenact the funeral so they actually dug a grave they put a person there put some plastic on it and then actually put (laughs) soil on top of them and you were 11 years old 11 or maybe 13 (gasps) right with you so far (laughs) something like that so i think i i just remembered about that maybe last week and I was like, so this is where this comes from. Oh. Okay, that explains a lot. And, um, well, there is uh, one of my favorite songs on the album is Six Feet. It's about, yeah. um, has like this elaborate story. Uh, it was actually um, inspired by a story of Dante Gabriele Rossetti and Elizabeth Siddle. Of course, yeah. Uh, so uh, what originally happened to them is that um, he's been playing around with her for like 10 years and... Uh, she overdosed in laudanum because she, she couldn't stand this anymore. And uh, he, uh, as a sentimental poet, he buried her with a notebook filled with his poems. Seven years later, his manager goes like, it's a pity we don't have those poems. How about we... Dig them up. Yeah. So that's exactly what they did. Yeah. And he wasn't there. And he specifically requested to never bury him next to his family yeah. on Highgate because he was afraid that Siddle would kind of revenge and I, I mean I would if I were her you make a choice of your own and you speak truth so don't you ask me where I've gone I know you are the one to guide us you see you are now 
I Am The Morning, Song of Psych. And there's a Mayana Semkina solo album coming out on Valentine's Day. French experimental atmospheric proggers clone signed K-Scope in 2019. They're well known for their spectacular live shows. So I ask Guillaume, who's the sensible one and who's the most rock and roll? Uh, it's uh, really easy to say it. Uh, Jan the singer will go to bed because he will have to sing. And it's important for his voice to have a good sleep. Um, and Aldrich will probably be the last one to go to bed because he really likes to make the party and uh, to have some fun. But uh, usually we are not crazy on the tour because uh, we are maybe too old for that. Just you and I In this red, blue yonder And real and wild Leave the sweet inception Until we die Leading us together On the other side
Clone from Le Grand Voyage, and that's entitled Yonder. Two interviews and two LPs from the quill and the electric and acoustic guitars of Mr Bruce Sword and his band The Pineapple Thief, currently on tour in the United States of America. The Pineapple Thief live album closed the release schedule of the year, and just before that, all of this will be yours, the solo album from a Bruce Sword. So inevitably, I asked him about the gestation of said LP. I've got a, a folder on my computer where every time I've got a, a new project on called Crap Bag, which I think is from the <laughs> Friends. She called herself something Crap Bag in one of the episodes. Anyway, it's called Crap Bag, and that's where all those wasted efforts go. Oh, so nothing and is nothing is destroyed no no but i'd like i don't i think i should probably have something written in that says no one's allowed into the crap bag when i you know Dying. move on <laughs> <laughs> has but, anything ever made it out of the crap bag? well funnily around? enough yeah because quite often you, you'll spend you know sometimes it can be a week the worst thing is when you've got a song that is almost good enough and you think yeah this is going somewhere and it's it's i could it's got something about it and then a week later you're like oh, i'm still trying to, and, and, you, and you just have to just mm. admit it's not going anywhere and then a couple of months later, you'll play it and you go, oh, hold on, that's it. That's that magic that I, was, that I knew was there. And then you grab it out. And it might only be a section of it that you then say, right, that's it. I can build the song around that idea. Okay. So sometimes, yeah, you, that, that, that's what I tell myself, that it's, yeah. not, it's not a complete waste. But it is, it's, like I said, it's a strange thing when you say, right, today, my job today when I wake up is to go and work on this chorus all day long. And if at the end of the day you've gone quite often gone backwards psychologically it's quite a quite a challenging thing but yeah i'm used Especially to it now. It's a solo record i mean it, this record that we're talking about has got bruce sword written on it so inevitably yes. it's going to be introspective inevitably it's going to be about what's on your mind at the time and i think it's pretty clear what was on your mind at the time <laughs> explain well it was i think for the solo i i just gave myself a complete permission to to be that introspect so introspective and I thought I don't care this is me I've locked away I'm not playing this to anyone not in you know so it was just me on my own for weeks turned into months of of doing this and um, but yes it was so it's all well you know what's been going on in the world and in this country and you had that everything and because it works in so many different sort of microcosms in this town you can see it happening everything changing Yeah. yeah
Bruce Sword, All This Will Be Yours from the album of the same name. Thank you so much for continuing to listen and share the K-Scope podcast. Very grateful to you and also to the artists for creating uh, this great music. Keep music independent. Keep supporting independent music in troubled times. Music is the healer. Going to finish with this. An album which slipped under the radar perhaps a little bit, the vinyl edition of Grind Show by North Atlantic Oscillation was released by the label this year. One of my favourite bands in all of the world. This is North Atlantic Oscillation and Spinning Top. See you next year. Happy Christmas if you celebrate it and Happy New Year. Ta-da!